All right, Uncle Sam FM here, and as you can see, we are about to play our first match here with East Tennessee State in the 2019 season, and we will be taking on Rhode Island today. We'll do a live com, uh, but before we get started, I'm going to kind of show you a few things. First of all, just a quick look at how our preseason has gone. I scheduled a few friendlies, mostly went all right, had the kind of grind through draws against UNC Asheville and then an academy team from Virginia Beach. But other than those somewhat negative results, we won all of our matches and looked decent. Um, team's not perfect. We'll put it that way, especially in the back. There are some issues, but uh, we're, you know, we're progressing. Um, and again, this is probably going to be a building project as East Tennessee State is not one of the better teams in the NCAA. But let's look at the squad. Real quick, I thought first I would look at um, our recruiting class, and that's the kind of terminology we use in when we're talking about college sports here in the United States. Um, signings would would be kind of, I guess, what you guys would call it, but it's it's college, so I'm going to dive in with the terminology. Our, um, our recruits that we brought in uh, before this season, uh, these are guys who are going to immediately contribute. I have a Tyler Gordon, who is a transfer from UNC Upstate, um, he's, you know, not great. He's got some decent stats, uh, determination, not super. Um, some of the important stats that we look at are not great. I'd like for his vision to be better, but he's you know, a good tackler. Uh, he probably will start for us. Um, he does have good jumping reach and decent heading. So I hope that he can kind of help us control the, uh, air in the back. Uh, and another transfer was Eder Lira. He is a central midfielder. He'll, he'll probably probably play in kind of the number eight role for us. Um, so sort of a box-to-box -box situation. Um, really, for us, he's kind of a deep-lying playmaker um, from his center mid spot. But he is, uh, he is from Mexico. And um, again, good, not great. I'd really like for his passing to get better. I need for that to improve for him to really be able to contribute. I don't think I have him starting, and that passing is a big reason why. Zion Jones is another uh, player that I brought in. Uh, good winger, good acceleration, You know, not great pace. Uh, dribbles well, passes well. That's important. I'd obviously like for his, his vision and his decisions to be better, but you know, kind of taking what I can get for this first class, um, which is not unrealistic when a new coach takes over sometimes he has to try and scrape together a class um of recruits and that's kind of my deal here christian nusatero is another player who uh he uh he was a free transfer probably this will be the only year he'll be able to play for us um again not not like this phenomenal standout player but hopefully he'll help us uh and then this player actually is too young he'll not be eligible this season but i hope to have him next year and he's a brazilian that uh my scouts brought to me um i really wish he was eligible he's easily probably well he's probably my best passer he's a good decent decisions uh good vision obviously his passing rating is good but uh, unfortunately he's too young so he'll not be playing this season so in college we call that red shirting um, so we're going to red shirt him this year and then bring him in as a freshman next year um, but this is, the, this is the starting 11 the squad that i have assembled actually lira is starting um and uh Alberto Padon, he is he's going to be important because we're going to need to score goals. He does have a decent uh, finishing, but also great pace and pretty good composure. And a 13 in determination, although, we, again, that's a attribute, obviously, we, we prefer around here. Um, and then, again, in the back, that's where we're going to kind of have our issues. Uh, Raul Rodriguez at right back, Gordon, and then Iloski. Um, looking at Iloski, again... He's a decent tackler, um, not super strong, lacks determination. So in the back is really where we're going to have our issues this season. If we're going to win games, we're going to have to outscore people. Um, real quick look at the staff. I'm not going to go in, in uh, any great detail here, um, but this is our coaching staff. Um, assistant Eric Edens has, yeah, obviously with, with coaches, all of them. I look at the DDM, deten uh, sorry, determination, discipline, motivation, and these guys are decent. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, those guys have decent attributes in those areas. Um, 
hopefully they get better. Um, it was another one of those kind of deals where I just took who I could get. Um, and then looking at our medical team, got a couple physios, not great. <laughs> and then just real quickly, I did bring in a couple of scouts. Um, my chief scout, not great uh, discipline or motivation, but I don't know if that's as important an attribute in that role. So those are, that's the staff I brought in. Nothing phenomenal there. And I did tell you we would look at training a little bit. Um, so first of all, I'll just kind of show you what I did. I built two different uh, preseason tra uh, training schedules. Um, so obviously you only get the three days and you only get two slots in each of those days. So I did obviously endurance and resistance and then a match practice. I put that in, uh, made sure that we, those were always there and then I rotated the uh, tactical and possession with attacking and defending really again I'm just I'm trying to get what I can from there we went into the early season I had two early season um, training schedules where I worked on attacking did patient overlap defending engage defending from the front um, and then defending disengage defending wide attacking direct attacking wings and I rotated the, uh, the between the two tactical uh, training programs. Um, and then I have an attacking um, training schedule that I, after, you know, now that we're in the, this part, we're in the season, uh, I do this twice a month. And then I do two different defendings, one each a month. And then I have a mental that I, I get in for once out of those five, you get five weeks. Um, and so I make sure I do two, two, and one. I can't say that it's anything great. Uh, it hopefully gets the job done. I'm really, you're obviously really limited with these amateur teams. And that's part of, that's kind of realistic uh, because in college, you know, they don't get the, they don't get a full year's worth of training. So um, I guess FM wise, that's probably as close as you're going to be able to get to recreating that dynamic. So uh, what it's done tactically, we'll look, see, I'm, I am pretty close to, being mostly you know fully tactical familiarity but i still have a little ways to go with our roles duties width um our mentality is not quite there yet but uh, i'd say we're ready to start the season um and our opponent so we'll go all the way back to match preview here and rhode island is they look like they're going to be a little better than us. Uh, I've looked at their players. It's, you know, kind of hit and miss. I, I feel like they're, um, you, I can't really see much of their players. But my scout opinion of their abilities, I think we match up well against them. But, you know, we'll see. You never know how these, these things go. And they are the favorites. So I'm planning on coming out um, slightly cautiously just to kind of see the flow of the game before we get too overly aggressive but uh, again these these early non-conference games I'm really just trying to see where I'm at what I've got player you know um, look at my team how how they play together and then um, start making some decisions before we go into our conference season we'll look again real quick at that I have what well, say one two three four five six seven I have eight non-conference games before playing my first conference game so this will that's a, I'd say that's pretty good. A uh, good chance to get my team ready for the season that really sort of matters. Uh, Fitness-wise, my first team, I, I'm low 90s with some of these guys, but I want to trot out my first 11 before, um, well, regardless of fitness, really, um, before I try to get cute with, with, you know, worrying about who's the most fit. Uh, I do rotate my team. Uh, I will be doing that. But for this first match, I'm really just trying to see what I've got first 11 wise. So let's go see what we got. And they're coming out in a narrow diamond. Uh, I am, of course, in my 4 3 3, and I do play a kind of tiki taka style of play. Um, you know, modeled after, you know, the Pep Guardiola Barcelona style. And let's go to tactics. And I'm going to go with my 343 version. I usually do that whenever um, the opponent has two strikers. Because what happens is my center back 
or my sorry, my number six, my defensive midfielder drops back into the line as my fullbacks go forward, and it kind of creates a three-four-three three situation. And as we said, I'm going to start cautious just to see how things go in the early running. And here we go. We have a foul right away. That'd be great to get one of their get them into some yellow card trouble. And we did already create a shot, so looking good so far. Was off target. We'll go ahead and close the match stats widget. Obviously, I like my widgets. Ooh, oh, did we get fouled? I think we did. Zian Jones got a penalty in the box. So far, so good. Let's see if Rodriguez can finish it. And he does. One to nothing. ETSU. The Buccaneers score the first goal of the Tony Stark era. That's going to be kind of dumb. Tony Stark managing a tiny college soccer team, but whatever. All right, so now we've got some card situation. That's uh, not good news. Let's see what we do here. Tell you what, I better go ahead and ease off tackles. Oh, and we have a second goal uh, by Zion Jones. He uh, drew the penalty. Then he gets the second goal here. Chavez has it out wide. Drops it back to Barron, who is my number six, and Jones. A nice finish. Nice cross from the number six. Jones with the one-touch volley. And we go up two to nothing. Yes, I'm going to keep that. And I'm going to... They did a shout, so I'm going to do a shout. Praise my team. Obviously, with a 2-0 lead. 20 minutes in. Of course, this is a dangerous lead because you kind of have to try and gauge what the opposition is doing. And Baron dropping back to Yoski, who lays it back to Santangelo, and we're, we're circulating. Rodriguez now on the right. Crosses to Castle. Now I can't pronounce that guy's name. Chavez here at the left. Drops it to Halleck, who is very good. Padone. Halleck's shot is saved by the keeper, and looks like we get a corner kick. And uh, that went to nothing. Cross into the box. Oh, and we have a third. Alberto Padone. And I'm probably mispronouncing that, but uh, it is what it is. Nice cross to the, almost to the far post. <laughs> Bounce to Padone, who put it away. Watch it again, I guess, to see if the is offside. He's a good hmm, yard and a half. Nice finish. All right. Well, this is how you start a match. We're a half hour in and up 3-0. That is how you want to start. So my guys seem to be in good spirits. Uh, I am going to have to start subbing early. Ooh, and we have five minutes left. Ooh, header over the bar. Rhode Island uh, does seem to be coming after us, but I'm set up for it. So, all right, that's a dominant half. Um, three to nothing, 13 shots to two, six shots on target to their one, 10 fouls. So we will go to the dressing room, tell the guys we are happy with how things are going. I am fitness-wise, I am low. Um, do I want to start making subs? I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to bring in Lucitero. I'm training him to move to the left, but I'm going to go ahead and bring him in for Zion Jones. And my left back, I'm not... <laughs> I may not be... Well, all my all my back four players that I have in my starting 23 are about the same, so I'm not... I'm just going to... Henry and Valenzuela for Rodriguez. That will let me take off that ease off tackles. Then their pep talk. Tell them that we have faith in them. And here we go. And so with that, I'll go ahead and mention, um, so in college soccer, 
you can unless rules have changed um which they i mean they may have you it's it's a free sub situation and Iloski gets a yellow card so they can sub in and out um i think it may have become just once you can be sub back in once i don't remember all the how it worked but it used to just be free subs in and out um as often as you wanted and fm you can't really recreate that but you can do you can just do max subs and so i have 23 man uh game day squad all subs and i usually use it and like we've got 25 minutes in here real quick and and i need to really start doing some subs um derek lee for Bur baron and i'm gonna bring in day for cast and yada but switch those two player uh, one of these had ease off tackles. Yeah, there we go. And who else needs? I'm going to take off Padone, bring in Maldonado. And we'll save a few other subs for the 80 minute mark. And the game is moving fast now. There, we're, Nobody's creating anything. Just going to bring in all the rest. I'm not going to switch my goalkeeper because if I have an injury, I want to make sure that I have a goalkeeper on the bench to bring in. All right. But that's all 10 outfielder, outfield players subbed, which means we have a, as fresh a team as possible. Valenzuela, Valenzuela with the cross. Beeson picks up a deflection on the shot, drops to Lee, out to Beeson, and they're just having the kickabout. Then we go to Valenzuela on the switch. To the gay. Oh, well, Maldonado's shot is blocked. We are now heading towards the end of the game here. And now from the free kick from the side, and we're gonna we're gonna get one one for the road. DeMarco Delgado, center back, heads in the free kick. Boom. And that gives us a four to nil victory. This is a good win. Um, Rhode Island, they're not a powerhouse, okay? So it's not like anything to get overly excited about. But they're one of the teams in our non-conference group that are, um, they're kind of in the middle of the pack. So to be able to win like this, to just utterly dominate, at least on the scoreboard, is encouraging. And that's going to be it. Four to nothing. What a result. Look at that. Um, so they I don't think they they got a single shot in the second half, which was good. Uh, seven, we had 17, 8 on target. Um, Clear-cut chances, 5. We even had a half chance. Uh, they did have one half chance. Um, possession, 67%. That's about where we want it. Um, if you start getting up over 70, then you're just kind of having the ball just to have it. We want to we wanna possess to score. Um, so yeah, passing percentage, 90%, but there you see that 75% passing in the defense. I've, I've done stuff to try and make that better, but the players I have right now are just not going to be able to push that number up very high, but still can't complain about a four to nothing win. That's a great result. Um, really no matter who you're playing against, right? Um, so well done fellas in that team talk. And we'll give a uh, real quick look. Dominant win. Yippee Skippy. Well done. Yeah, well, praise Baron. He did have a good game. His That one, he did a cross from from the channel that uh, um, was pretty good for a number six. What's his cross rating? It's only a six. So, hey, well done. Great job. Um, we'll look real quick at our future opponent, Seattle University. Uh, we are in East Tennessee. This is about as far as you can get from where East Tennessee is, but um, that's a good uh, regional opponent. Their results so far, ooh, they had a 4 nothing win against Indiana. Indiana, probably won't be able to see much about their team now, but Indiana is one of the powerhouses. Um, as you can see, they've won the Big Ten Conference many times, 2018. Uh, they also have won eight national championships 2012 being the last one but they're still a very good program and seattle ran them off the field 
So Seattle, probably no pushover. Uh, don't have any scout reports on them yet. But that's our next opponent. Um, maybe next time I'll dive a little deeper into tactics or something, but uh, we'll let that be the end of this episode to keep it from dragging on too long. This is Uncle Sam FM coming off of a huge win to start the Tony Stark era at East Tennessee State. Hopefully we'll see you next time. Leave any comments, suggestions, um, but we'll sign off. 